I asked the question saying, why do they constantly blame capitalism and, and socialism is, what is the benefit of doing that? Why, why, why blame an economical system that's, that's proven, that's worked to constantly say black, you know, capitalism's getting a black eye, capitalism's getting a black eye, capitalism doesn't work. We need a new form of capitalism. How much well, of that argument is right and how much of it is just, you know, finding something to blame? We don't need a new form of capitalism. We need to go back to capitalism. The, the type of capitalism that we've been practicing has been the problem because it's capitalism in name only, right? It's socialism or maybe more accurately fascism, if you understand the true meaning, because uh, fascism is a form of socialism. So is uh, communism. And what we've been doing is more of a Mussolini type fascism, uh, obviously, than communism. But that is the problem with the economy, that economic system. But a, in order to do the right thing, first you have to have the politicians and the central bankers admit that they did the wrong thing in the past, which they never want to do. They never want to fess up to their mistakes and say, we did this, right? We interfered with capitalism and that's why we have this problem. So number one, they never want to do that. But if they finally embrace capitalism and say, okay, we're going to swallow this bitter tasting medicine because ultimately recessions is the free market's way of fixing the mistakes that the government and the central banks create because the mistakes are made during the bubble, during the boom, right? Everybody feels great during the boom, but that's when all the malinvestments are made, all the misallocations or resources are uh, occur. Then when there's a bust, that's the free market's attempt to restore order, to create balance in the economy so it's viable and sustainable. Uh, and so you have to allow a recession to run its course, even though it's painful, even though it means people lose jobs, investors lose money, uh, you know, loans go into default, companies that are not viable go bankrupt. And what happens in that cleansing process is that resources are freed up to be reallocated more efficiently and more productively. That includes labor and, and, and capital and land. Uh, but that process obviously is painful to certain people. Uh, and, you know, in, in the immediate, you don't know uh, how it's going to end. And so the politicians are under tremendous pressure to do something about it. Oh, people are unemployed. Let's provide them with money. Businesses are going to fail. Let's bail them out. Instead of doing the right thing by allowing the businesses to fail, right, and, and allowing uh, all the, 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 you know, the, the reallocation of labor and capital, they interfere. But the interference is what makes it worse. It, it exacerbates uh, the, de the downturn. And it, me it means that we don't get a real recovery. The recovery that we had following the 2008 financial crisis was phony. It was just a bigger bubble than the one that popped. Had we done the right thing in 08 and let uh, real estate prices continue to fall, let foreclosures happen, let banks fail and not bail them out, let the bad actors be punished, right? Let new owners step up and buy in bankruptcy a lot of these companies that were so mismanaged and allowed you know, consumption to come down and savings to go up, which is the underlying problem that the Fed created is a nation where we have too much debt and not enough savings. So instead of allowing uh, the savings to be rebuilt and balance sheets to be improved, we inflated an even bigger bubble than the one that popped. And so we didn't have a real recovery. And that's why the economy is so vulnerable now to this uh, uh, COVID-19 crisis. Because as I said, the economy was sick long before uh, the virus infected it. And the air was already coming out of the bubble because the Fed tried to do something that was impossible, which was normalize interest rates with an abnormal amount of debt. They got everybody you know, hooked on the, the drug of cheap money and then tried to withdraw the drug from the market. And then obviously we, we went into withdrawal at the end of 2018. That's when the Fed came back and said, okay, more QE, we're going back to QE, we're going back to rate cuts. But then we got the, the coronavirus and what everybody is focusing on is the virus. The virus is the pin. The problem is the massive bubble that that pin pricked. And in fact, it, I said it was, already kind of pricked, that pin just put a gaping hole in that bubble. And now the air is coming gushing out. But the reason 
that the economy is so vulnerable is because we're broke and levered to the hilt. The reason that nobody can do without uh, income for a few weeks or a few months is because everybody has debt to service, right? Corporations are levered to the max. They've been borrowing all this cheap money from the Fed. They've been using it to buy up their overpriced stock. So they didn't have any, any, any savings. Individual households are leveraged to the max on cheap consumer credit. They got mortgage debt, student loans, auto loans, credit card debt. They're living paycheck to paycheck. You take that paycheck to, away, they can't pay their rent, they can't pay their mortgage, they can't pay their debts. The same thing with local governments, uh, state uh, municipalities have been uh, you know, making promises they couldn't keep. They've been borrowing all this money. They have underfunded pensions. They got nothing saved for a rainy day. Then it pours. So the states are broke. And then the federal government, of course, is we've been running massive deficits even when the economy was supposedly recovering. So everybody is broke, nobody has savings, and then this crisis comes, right? And, and a lot of people wanna talk about, well, this is like World War II. It's the opposite of World War II because when World War II hit, nobody got bailed out, nobody got a stimulus check, Every got, everybody got a bill for World War II. First of all, 16 million men had a fight they had to leave their homes and they had to go to Europe and Japan. Uh, but the people who didn't fight had to finance the war. The, the government massively increased taxes when the war began. Uh, oh, fewer than 3% of the population even paid income taxes uh, before World War II. Uh, once it started, better than 30% of the people started to pay income taxes uh, because we imposed withholding taxes for the first time as part of the victory tax. But not only did we triple taxes, on the middle class to pay for the war. But the government borrowed money directly from the middle, middle class by selling war bonds. And so everybody stopped spending and was giving all their money to the government in either taxes or in direct loans. And where were all the customers? Where were all the businesses who now had a big drop in their sales, right? I mean, restaurants, I mean, who was eating in restaurants when you know everybody was fighting a war or everybody was you know loaning money to the government? I mean. All of these businesses suffered. Consumer spending imploded uh, during the uh, Second World War, yet not a single business got bailed out. No, no, no. The, the government relied on the people to pay for that war. Now we're all, we all believe that the, the government needs to bail out the people. The government needs to bail out individuals. The government has to bail out the states. The government has to bail out uh, corporations. With what money? The government doesn't have any money. It's the people that support the government, not the other way around. But we're pretending that the government can support the people by using a printing press. That all we have to do is print money and nobody has to work, nobody has to produce. We can have all this stuff for free. But we're about to find out the hard way that the most expensive way to pay for government is through inflation, through printing money. That's what we're doing and we're about to relive uh, the lessons of history because uh, a lot of countries have tried this before and it has ended in disaster every time it's been tried.